Good Wednesday morning. Today is the Feast of St. Matthew, the Apostle and Evangelist. And it's two great texts here. The calling, obviously, of Matthew, okay? I'll read it to you. Jesus passed by. That always means it's a, a theophanic event. I think they call it that. God is present in their passing by. Remember Passover, okay? As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the custom post. He said to him, follow me. See, as God told Moses, follow him across the desert. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard him say this and he said, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I seek mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. See, Matt, there's an interesting story. Matthew is, uh, now you remember, he, while he's Jewish, as a Jew, he's working for the Romans. He's a betrayer. He's a traitor, okay? The Pharisees had every right to go after him. But as soon as he sees Christ, he gets up and he leaves that way of life and follows Christ. See, it's a passerby. As Christ passes by, it's a calling. He calls Matthew. And Matthew hears the call and responds. The world has never been the same. Neither Matthew's world or our world's great evangelist. See? And in the, in the first reading, it's from Ephesians. I, I love the letter. To, I love St. Paul's writings. But I'll read it to you, okay? Especially at the end of it, okay? He said, Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body, one Spirit, as you are also called to one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one Baptist, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. God, what a theological claim. They're magnificent. But watch what he says now, okay? This applies to Matthew. It applies to all of us. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. He gave, and he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and acknowledge and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. See, each one of us have been called, some to apostles, prophets. I got two out of these, two out of the bunch, pastor and teacher, you see? It's interesting. We are called, you're called to marriage. They're called you called be you called to this to you're called I can't say this right. You are called to a vocation of, of service to the church in the book in the life that you have. I didn't say any of that right. Okay? I'm sorry. I just stumbled over my words. Each one of us is called to serve Christ through each other. That's when it's, some of us have very specialized callings. Very special. And not because we're special. The calling is special. We're not. We're mere servants. We're servants, but we're called to serve. Matthew wasn't worthy of anything, nothing, enmity. And yet Christ calls him and he becomes one of the four evangelists and a great apostle and a martyr. You see? Matthew had nothing going for him. And yet he heard the call. He saw Christ and heard the call. It wasn't Matthew's worthiness. He, hadn't got a, he had no claim on Christ, none at all. He had no claim on innocence. He was as guilty as they came. Yet Christ called him, and he heard the call, and he answered it. We answer the call through the life we have. And in the moments of our life, we are called some to marries me, the priesthood, and the academic life, etc. My niece asked me, Michelle, I think I told you this already a million times. Michelle asked me a long, she was just a little girl at the time, why did you become a priest? And I said, seriously, said, Michelle, I felt called. And it is really the truth. I felt called. It wasn't something that my folks had proper, you know, uh, promoted or anything. I had no great love of the priest or the priesthood or anything else. I just felt called. Yeah. And the thing is, I couldn't say no to the call. I'd be honest with it. Yeah. Yeah, we're called to serve. I mean, each of us, we're not worthy of anything. It's not saying we're called. 
You could almost say, are you worthy of your spouse? But you're called to love him or her, you see? And in a sense, you fulfilled the calling in the actions of your life with each other. Okay? I can never claim that I uh, that I, I earned this calling. I did not. Didn't even want it. Matthew did. But I can see others that say, come on, don't call us out. You know, no, leave me alone. You know, don't. I'd, I'd be honest about it. I think, God, all I wanted was a date <laughs> with this, the girls I liked. The last thing in the world I wanted was a celibate life, and that's what I got called to. That's the truth. And my mother said to me, you'll never make it the priest. She says, you like girls too much. And my mother said that to me. Yeah, it's a true story. Well, she was right, but I didn't make the priest that I have so far persevered after 60 years, 50 in the priest and 60 in religious life, <laughs> you know? Uh, but I do like girls. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still do. Old man that I am. I love teaching these young women in class. I hope I don't flirt with them, but I sort of get, they kind of get, they're beautiful to me. The men are wonderful. I love playing with them. I have to say that. I, They give me energy, and I'm so privileged. I feel so privileged in life to be called to live this way. I have to say, even my vices become my virtues. See? God writes straight sometimes with our crooked lines. He writes very straight with Matthew's lines. You see, Matthew was a betrayer. He was a traitor. He turns out to be an evangelist. See? God makes use of who and what we are for the purpose of the kingdom of God, the fulfillment and the full life of the body of Christ, which is the church. For the vast majority, it's through marriage and also the professional lives. But I think of marriage because it's a sacrament. It's a consecration to each other in love. You're called by the beauty of the beloved. See? Christ calls you through the beauty of your beloved. Yeah. Yeah, that's the truth. And, and your families are the expression of that. Isn't that neat? You're caring for each other and your love for your, for your spouse, your love for your children and grandchildren are the sacraments and that are forms of worship of God as well. Not only do you enhance the life of your beloved, you enrich the church. That's the truth. Your ministry to the church is to love your spouse <laughs> and to, to love your children. See, that's the sacrament. You can go into the men's club or ladies' sodality or this or that. No, I'm not taking it away from it. But the ultimate, the ultimate service of the church is the love you have for your spouse, your care for your family. I really mean that, too. As you love your family, you enrich the church. So I do my thing with the parish and the priesthood and the preaching, whatever I do, and in my teaching, I enrich the church, hopefully. I hope I do my way. I love the song by Frank Sinatra, My Way. God doesn't call us to a stereotypical way. He calls us to a personal way. And in whatever way he calls us, we bring ourselves to the calling, to the answer. Matthew gets up and follows Christ. He doesn't become a St. John. He doesn't become a St. Paul. He is Matthew the Apostle. And we are who we are, called by God to be who we are. And in being who we are, we enrich the life of the church through the vocation he calls us to live. I believe that. Our way. You can say, I think uh, somebody asked me what's my favorite song. My favorite song is My Way by Frank Sinatra. When I die, I hope they'll play that. <laughs> he did it his way. But it is also God's way. He called me, not an abstraction, me. And hopefully I have responded in who and what I am, as you do to each other. <laughs>